Hey friends, Kate from Venison for Dinner here. Marys and I are about to do some vacuum sealing of cheeses and we thought we would take you along for the ride. So the first one we're gonna do here is some feta. A big problem with feta is that it likes to melt into the brine if you don't have the pH of the brine right. So what I've been playing with is where you brine it for a couple days and then we vacuum seal it and freeze it and it thaws perfectly. So this way, um, you know, it thaws fairly quickly. Maybe one day I'll nail down the brine, but for now, this is better than being disappointed by finding a gallon jar of feta having melted into the brine. So, this one you can see the color of the salt. Because I use real salts, they often add a bit of color to the cheese and this is not a problem in my books. We have a Weston Pro 2300 vacuum sealer. This baby is more of an investment than a food saver. However, we've had this for five years and when we vacuum seal things, we vacuum seal like a lot of things in a row. These are about to get cut up and done in wedges. Or we'll do like a pile of fish at once, a pile of jerky, and the food saver just couldn't keep up with it. So when our food saver died, we decided to save up and buy this, and we love it. So these are some pre-made bags I bought. We don't love them, so we don't use them for freezing fish. Because in the freezer, they don't hold up well, but they seem to hold up well for cheese, so we're just using them up and we won't buy them again. The Weston vacuum sealer has, it's good for any type of vacuum seal bags that I have tried. There are some that we don't like as much. Um, these ones, I'll link them for you. We bought them on Amazon and they are really good, just as good as the Food Saver brand, but so much cheaper. I've got four cheeses here and these are all ones that I kind of was playing with a bit. So this is a spice scooter and you can see how it's kind of sunken in. I was playing with doing this cheese on the soft side when I was stirring the curds, so that's what that is. Same with this booter case, I did it on the soft side, I did them both the same week. And I wanted to see how they would be if I did the curds a little soft. Now this one is a hot pepper gouda. I had done, um, I reused this bag. So I had done two teaspoons of hot pepper with seven gallon batch, um, and that was just mild, that wasn't hot at all. So this time I did two teaspoons to a four gallon batch. So we'll see how that is spice wise. And also I used kefir as the culture, which it's kind of a tricky one to use because your kefir has to be really mild and really well taken care of. This one is one that I messed up. So I did meso culture and then I didn't set a timer and I completely forgot about it for two to three hours after cutting the curds. Then I accidentally overheated it. I pressed it like a Gouda and Freya asked if we could call it Freya's cheese. So it's been aging for two months now and we'll see what it tastes like. When you see this, I may or may not still be pregnant. For now I am. Oh. I'm just gonna keep my comments. You're gonna keep your comments to yourself? Mm -hmm. So since we are having a cheese tasting, Mary's pulled out some Saskatoon wine. Last cheese tasting video we did, what were you drinking? Rhubarb. Rhubarb wine. Now he has Saskatoon berry wine. This is a cumin spice gouda, which is our very favorite gouda. That feta is really wet and it's so so on ceiling. Are you gonna do it one more time? Yeah. So Mm. 
Next one is two months old cumin spiced gouda. I was trying to make this one softer. Mm -hmm. I definitely succeeded there. It's pretty good. We'll do this one into wedges. And then you can just vacuum seal this half one. We'll just do it as a half for now. Yeah. There's These no. came in a multi pack that you bought. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. That might work. Yeah. Okay. I'm do like a whole bunch. Or two, I guess. I'm do it. Let's try. So this is the Budakais or Budakaiser butter cheese, German butter cheese. Um, it's a little wet, but it doesn't smell bad or anything. Um, so I won't reuse this bag since this bag is wet. And all I do then is I take the cheese out of the bag and with a clean tea towel, I just give the cheese a little bit of a pat down and then I just let it air dry for a few minutes before we vacuum seal it again in wedges and it'll be just fine. There's scissors here that are good. Okay. Really good. Really good. So this one is super soft. This butter cheese. One thing too, if you feel like the rind smells a little strong or like it was a bit moist, when you taste it, um, I recommend not tasting the rind then, like taking a slice. It's so soft, it's hard to slice. And, too big for that? So then cutting off the edges and trying just the inner part of the cheese so you get a true flavor for the cheese and not just if the rind, like sometimes the rind even if it smells a little strong, once it sat on the counter for a little bit, like up to an hour even, just air drying, letting it air out, it'll be fine. Mm, that's really creamy. Can you do smaller wedges for this one? Uh, yeah, put them into five instead of four. Yeah. And they fit the tight. So butter cheese, butter case is a very mild cheese and it also is good to eat after just a month of just vacuum sealed and in your fridge and in a month it's yummy to eat. So this is nice if you're trying to keep up with a lot of eaters or you're just getting into making cheese. I don't, like people always want to make cheddar, that's their big thing. These little wedges, you can do them in that. I was going to do those too. Okay. <laughs> Still want them individual? Yep. Mm. So quite often when people want to make cheese, their first thing is they want to make cheddar because cheddar is the one that they buy the most. But cheddar is not the simplest process and it takes a good six months for it tastes good. So you don't know for so long if you did well. Whereas with Buddha case and Gouda, they're both four to six weeks until you're eating them. So you know pretty quickly and if your cow's in milk, then you know and you can get making more of those cheeses and experimenting with cumin and hot pepper and those sort of Nothing like goat. Marius doesn't really like Budokase very much because he says it's too mild for him. 
He likes stronger cheeses, the stronger the better. But the kids love Buddha case and it's a great one to serve to guests too because not everybody wants a really strong cheese and it's a great cheese and crackers cheese, grilled cheese, cheese. Cheese, cheese. Cheese, cheese, all cheese. I have another kefir cultured Gouda, but it's a little on the young side, not quite ready to eat. So we're gonna leave that one for now, but we're gonna see how this one went. Although I'm not really a spicy cheese person, or a spicy anything person. So I hope it's not too spicy. But the main thing is that kefir, your kefir needs to be refreshed regularly. It can't be neglected kefir, milk kefir grains. Neglected meat, milk, kefir grains throw off a lot of yeasts, and you don't want that in your cheese. It's going to lead to strong flavors that you that are not good strong flavors, like stinky sock strong flavors. But I made sure that my kefir was super happy and that I was feeding it regularly before I used it to make these cheeses. The hot pepper mix we used was... Um... Can I double some up? Like in a bigger bag? Yep. Um, my mom grows hot peppers and Marius had dried some that we've got from a fruit truck. So just a whole mix of different peppers. It's best if you can do them not touching each other, I think. Yes, boss. Uh, he find, Marius puts hot pepper flakes on almost all his food. So he likes a mix of different peppers for flavor and heat and all that. So as you can see, it's really colorful. It looks really delicious. Cover that. That's not good. And I never showed you a close up. You can see because it was soft, it ended up kind of a catawampus looking wheel. But when you eat it, it doesn't matter if it looks catawampus. And that's where vacuum sealing is more forgiving because if a cheese starts to slump like this when it's waxed, it can really mess with the wax. Or if your cheese has a really uneven surface, it's hard to wax and vacuum sealing is so much more forgiving. but it's got more heat to it. You, it's got way more. Yes, I label. Okay. It's got some pepper aftertaste. It's got some aftertaste. I can taste it. No heat though. I can taste some aftertaste. I bet you can. So this was two teaspoons and four gallons. I would call this a medium. But it's got good Gouda taste. It doesn't have any funky flavors going on with it. If anything, it's a little more mild, but it's got the right texture, everything. That kefir mm -hmm. worked out really well for it. good. Yeah, that kefir worked out really well in this. Kefir's one that people can really have hit and miss results with. But I think you just have to have really happy kefir. Hmm. What? I think depending on where you've gotten the that cheese That bag too, was not reusable. This one is going to have this half of it. Okay. But this, this one's one bag was not reusable. No. Too wet on the inside. No. There is some heat to that cheese. I'll make it no, spicier for you. No heat to that but I can taste the heat. I'm a wuss with spice. Here is Freya's cheese. This one may need to age longer, we don't know.
I find when you mess up a cheese, just keep trying to go forward and just label what you did wrong and maybe it'll be the best cheese we ever ate. It usually is. It's, it's a lot harder though. This is one of Mary's butcher knives, but it works so good for cutting wheels and cheese. I've made before. It's got a little different taste to it. What's it supposed to be? I don't even know what I started it as. <laughs> I just wrote the notes on what I messed up. Mystery cheese. As far as the mess up goes, it's edible. It's very edible. Um, not your best, but not the worst. It's almost got like a little acidity to it. Like it almost tastes like it has a bit of vinegar in it. Like I have a note of apple cider vinegar. It's why I think it's important to know not just like a lot of recipes with cheese making teach you're going to do it for this many minutes until it gets to this temperature, you're going to stir it, and then you move on to the next step. I think it's important to know like what should it look like before you move on to the next step. So this way, if you mess up a cheese, you kind of have an idea how to move forward. Like, okay, I messed up that timeline and that temperature, but these curds feel about like a Gouda curd firmness. So let's just proceed and treat it like a Gouda. And I think that makes it so you can save your mess ups and not just end up feeding it to the chickens and pigs. I think Frey will really like that one. Mm -hmm. Why don't they go in the snowmobile sled? It's way more cozy to ride on your ass. Yeah. The kids were out snowmobiling. And they're pulling Hamish in that sled, but he's not actually in the sled. He was just hanging out the back. They're poor snow pants. On purpose. On purpose he was like that, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes people have concerns about using a lot of vacuum sealer bags and such with the cheese process. But in my experience with waxing, I quite often ended up having to cut off cheese that like if the wax cracked or whatever, and I, it was just like in some ways more high maintenance. This is just so low maintenance. And by having a family cow, we already cut down on so much waste because we're not buying jugs of milk and jugs of cream and jugs of yogurt and all these things. We're cutting down on so much waste as it is that vacuum sealer bags for our cheese is just one of those things that we are more than happy to do. You want to try your cheese? Freya's cheese? It's this one here. What's that? Butter cheese. Hamster. Freya, come over here and try it. Feta? Yeah. What do you think of it, Freya? Cheese cake. Girl's cheese. It tastes like when we made Ella's cheese. Mm -hmm. Another time when we had a wheel of cheese and we had a friend over, we named it Ella's cheese after her. Because we had no idea. Because we had no idea. I think it wasn't that I messed it up, is that I didn't even label the wheel of cheese. Mm -hmm. And she was like, I like this. Let's call it Ella's cheese. Yep. So then Freya wanted one named after her. Mm. How's it, Hamish? Good. 